Rashid here, or Dr. Rashid Gabdulhakov, and continuing our conversation about obtaining a PhD in the Netherlands. So when I was 30, I decided that I want to do a PhD after all. You know, it was a long journey, long academic journey before that. I received my bachelor degree in 2009 in the United States in political science, and I was certain that I don't want to continue with academia. <laughs> Later on, I ended up doing two master's degrees. When I was 30, I was in Bishkek, Kyrgyz Republic, with my wife, and I locked myself in for three months in an apartment we were renting. And I said, you know, I'm going to just focus on finding a PhD. Are you okay with that? Are you going to support me? She said, yes, of course. I have my full support. Uh, do what, what you have to, you know. And that's another thing that is important to mention. If you want to do a PhD and you have a partner, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, wife, husband, uh, someone in your life who you share this journey with, and who will be there with you, you need to make sure that you have their support, that they're going to be with you, uh, because it is a huge commitment, time-wise, uh, emotions-wise. It's your life for four or five years. People who are joining along have to be aware of what they're signing up for, and hopefully you have their support as well. So I was lucky to have the full support of my wife and you know, she was bringing me cakes <laughs> while I was looking for a PhD. Finding a PhD, and she was also <laughs> reading, and uh, she was my uh, toughest critic. So locked myself in. I knew I wanted a PhD, uh, but how do how do you start? So I had a plan with uh, three different ways. Uh, finding a scholarship, directly contacting academics, and finding a position uh, through job advertisements. And I launched all three simultaneously so that the process can be multi-vectoral. And I suggest you do the same. So the first one, there is a German scholarship, DAAD, which, uh, you know, it's quite logical. If you win the scholarship, you take care of your own arrangements as far as being accepted to a university, to a project. And then you have a guaranteed salary because in Germany, uh, university education is free. So the program will cover your semester costs and also your living expenses. It's a modest, relatively modest, of course. Uh, everything is in relative terms. Keep that in mind. Uh, salary, but it allows you to do what you want to do. Focus on your research for three or four years and be able to sustain yourself in the meantime. So I launched the DAAD application. Meanwhile, I started looking for academics working in my field, which was social media, people-to-people uh, -people policing. Um, I focused on Russia and post-Soviet space. So I started narrowing down my search of academics. I found a few and I started emailing them directly. Very short message, no need to write an essay, no need to tell about you know yourself on pages and pages, very quick notes. This is my name. This is what I want to study. Uh, I'm attaching my brief one-page CV do you have funding or interest in working with me? If so, I would like to find out how I can be of help and how I can join your team, your project, if that's possible. That's it. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a risky one. Most people will ignore your email. Also, now being an academic myself, I realize that most academics don't have any money or projects or time to hire you or opportunity, but some will. And if you have emailed me back and said, we are interested to work with you, uh, this is the process through which you can apply to, uh, you know, upcoming job advertisements or, you know, uh, we are interested in you, but we don't have any funding. Can you do this? Can you secure your own funding? There, there were a few, you know, uh, varying replies, but nevertheless, there were responses, which made me really happy, of course. And, you know, in the meantime, I also applied for advertised jobs. Uh, you see the description of a PhD project. Someone has won a grant. They have the funds. They are looking for a candidate. You apply there. And then, I, you know, obviously I started looking for countries where I wanted to do it. I knew I, I didn't want to be in the States. I've lived in the States for seven years and I wanted to explore new places. I really wanted to be in Europe, uh, you know, to enjoy the Schengen zone, the opportunity to travel but I also wanted to do it um, not for six years <laughs> or for 10 years. I wanted to have a three to four year PhD experience. 
I knew almost nothing about the Netherlands in principle and nothing about Rotterdam in particular. And suddenly, in my search, I stumble upon a job adverti advertisement for a PhD position at Erasmus University in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I read the description, and it was posted on Academic Transfer, by the way, a website, which I will le leave a link to in the description to the video, but that is a go-to website for academic positions in the Netherlands. And I read the description, and my hands started to shake because I'm reading it and I'm realizing that that's the project that I want to be engaged in. And I'm like, it's me, it's me, it's me. I just, you know, I just need to convince them that it's me as well. Uh, and I, you know, took my time to read. I read the project description several times. I watched the, uh, I read everything by written by my potential or prospective at that point supervisor, Dr. Daniel Trottier. I watched his YouTube videos, Daniel, now you know, <laughs> you know, uh, so, but I did some surveillance as well, no, but I had to understand what kind of person this is, what they're researching, you know, what their interest is, uh, how are they in academia or maybe beyond. And I also started reading up on the field of surveillance because, you know, I was coming from my background in political science and security studies, but I needed to brush up on surveillance studies. So I downloaded 60 or so articles and I started reading them. I read them, took notes as I went, uh, built a bit of a literature review, which I eventually incorporated in my proposal. And the requirements were, if I don't, if I remember correctly now, sending a very brief proposal around 700 words. And if you're asked to send send 700 words, send 700 words and not more. You don't send 7,000 thinking that you will be selected unconditionally for that because there are a lot of applicants. Sometimes 140, 150 people apply for a PhD position here in the Netherlands. So, you know, don't, don't uh, write thousands and thousands of words, especially if you asked to be concise. Chances are you'll be asked to compile everything in a single PDF and send it in. That's how things are done most of the time. So a brief research proposal, a brief CV, research statement, teaching statement, something like that is a usual uh, package for applying for PhD. I wrote out my project description uh, for in 700 words. It was very challenging because there is so much you want to say. Uh, but keep in mind that if you are a strong candidate, you will have a chance to do that in the interview. Uh, now, having made this statement, I need to clarify that sometimes the strongest candidates don't make it. Uh, sometimes there is a bias or other reasons or what have you, you know, that's not often guaranteed. So I, I, I will often probably say something and then immediately uh, make a side note. <laughs> uh, in any case, that's how I'm conditioned to think now as an academic. So I prepare my package or application package, you know, with the CV, with the carefully crafted uh, research proposal, everything, and I send it in. And of course they tell you, send it in and forget about it. That's impossible. <laughs> you send it in and you check your email immediately. Did they reply? No, so you send it in and you're thinking, okay, okay. you take a few days off, walk around. And uh, next thing I know, I'm invited to the first interview. It was a one-on-one -on -one with Daniel via Skype. This was pre-pandemic. So Skype interviews were quite, uh, rare i would say but because of the fact that i was living in the kyrgyz republic and daniel was in the netherlands we had a skype interview then uh, another one and more people appeared and i think it was three then another one and i think it was four or six and then they say fly into rotterdam we want to see you in person i was like well i need a visa <laughs> you know so uh they were really accompanying in that as well you know the department secretary uh, Evelyn Mawis, Evelyn, uh, thank you so much for all the support throughout these years, uh, sent me the invitation letters promptly via DHL. I was able to go to the embassy, journal, German embassy represented the Netherlands in the Kyrgyz Republic. I got the Schengen visa, flew in for something crazy like 48 or maybe 56 hours, <laughs> you know. First time in the Netherlands, walk out five in the morning in Amsterdam, quick nap, train to Rotterdam. And then I had my interview and on the spot, I was offered the position, which I gladly accepted. 
uh, and then the process began, you know, with uh, with with the contracts, visas, immigration, and coming here ultimately. Uh, but that's a story for the next episode. In this one, I would like to tell you, you know, just to summarize what I have said: um, diversify your search strategies. If there are scholarships to you, you qualify for, launch that. Yeah, I ended up being called in, by the way, for a DAAD uh, interview. But at that point, I had an offer from Erasmus. So I said, oh, yeah, I'm not interested anymore. Let other candidates, uh, you know, go through the process and hopefully uh, receive the scholarship. So I withdrew my application. Uh, I thanked and followed up with all the professors I emailed who expressed potential interest in me, whether there was funding or not, and, you know, told them that I'm going to do this project uh, at Erasmus University in the Netherlands. But anyways, you should diversify your search terms, you know, look for scholarships. Don't be afraid to email people directly, but don't be annoying as well. Imagine yourself in their place. They're overworked. They're underpaid. They probably have no funding. So just tap the waters, see what might be available there but don't expect that they're going to email you back and say yes wonderful so great to hear you thank you you are a blessing i'm glad your email came join our project that's impossible uh they will probably tell you that you know if there is either no funding or there are opportunities coming up and consider applying but you're gathering information you are establishing some you know networks and of course, the third one is applied to existing positions. That's probably the safest bet. Well, after scholarships, but you know, you are you are competing, of course, with a lot of other people. But you are applying for a concrete position with funding. And you know, think about the country you want to live in. Are you looking for sunshine and beaches? Then maybe you know you shouldn't go to Norway or Finland, or you know, or are you looking for more? you know work life balance although there is not in academia of course <laughs> but you know do you want do you want at least the theory of work life balance it's exciting to live in a new country but it's also uh we often focus too much on the excitement without considering the uh, difficulties you know of relocating being in a whole new culture whole new way of life new food new everything and uh for me, it was very exciting in my 20s and in my 30s, even early 30s. Now I'm 37 almost. Uh, but now I know that if I had to do it again, uh, it might it would, might be very different because, you know, the older you get, the more difficult it is, I think, to change things completely around you. Although I'm only speaking for myself, maybe for others, it's not the case. So diversify your searches and hopefully you will find a dream PhD position that will bring you joy. And next time we will focus on some of the nuances uh, of obtaining a PhD in the Netherlands specifically. Until then, please take care, be happy and stay healthy.